there's going to be changes next year. I mean, it's different. It would, we're not. Don't worry. Oh, you know, we're not going to. We're not going to kill the show for you. You know, we we love the show. We love the characters. We love the actors. We just want to. So much about it is how House interacts with people. So we want to. We want to open that up a little bit. There could be some additions to the cast next year. I don't know. We haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> haven't figured it out yet. We're going to have a lot of fun with it, though. Yeah, that's freaky. That, that's simply freaky. That just um, you, you you write something and you get excited about it and you think it's good and you, you know they're putting it on TV, so you know there's going to be a few people watching it and 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 I just want to have the chance to tell stories and so I just care that there's enough people watching it so they don't cancel my show. But then when you start hearing about numbers like 20 million, 25 million people, and, and it's just it's sort of mind boggling. And then. Then people from Australia come and visit. And I go, my God! People, people in a country halfway around the world are are watching the show too. It just somehow all seems surreal, and uh, I'm still the same guy I always was. No. <laughs> it's it's bizarre. It's crazy. Yeah, you, you do. I mean, I you do feel pressure to get get it real, to keep the to keep the medicine real, to not. Although we're a dramatic show and we want to be entertaining, we want to be dramatic. We want to have moments of laughter and moments of tears, but you want those moments to be real because the—I always say the, the characters aren't real. We've made up the characters, but the situations are actually real. These are situations that people actually confront. And what you want to do as a writer and and I'm sure as an actor and as a director is deal with those moments and and play them out and and. I think that's when the show. I think that's when television's at its best. Is when people are watching it and going, "Yeah, well, what would I do in that situation? God forbid I'm in that situation. What would I do? What is the right thing to do?" And we so often see good and bad and right and wrong in fairly simplistic terms. And usually the realities are much more complicated. And there may be a right answer, but it's not as simple as as we hope. The reality is, I, I, we've created this character. This, uh, you know, Hugh Laurie is this character that's. That's nasty, and that people love. I'm not turning him into a nice guy tomorrow, and nor do I want to, actually. And I think think the audience wants us to. We will continue to explore the nature of this character and how he relates to people in this way for as long as we possibly can. So we'll continue to explore how how he relates to people for as long as we possibly can, and it's. That's sort of a constant debate: Is there a heart of gold inside there? I think people are projecting this heart of gold because what he's doing is good. But the question is, why is he doing it? Is, are his motives good, or are his motives simply as crass as I'm curious? And then, of course, we ask the question: Does it really matter what his motives are? If what he's doing is something good, does it matter why he's doing it? But yeah, there'll be you know, we we can't let him fall into complete evilness because that's not who he is, and that's not real. So we constantly have to have glimpses of. Him being complicated, and complications are, are more than just how mean and nasty can he be. We, we have to see both sides. But I actually think the, we'll run into more trouble if we make him soft, and if we, you know, there's there's a line. If, if you go too far on the nasty side, the audience will start disliking your character. But if you make him too nice, I think he just isn't who he is. That will continue. I don't think you're going to see. We've done that. It's a little more. We, we've we will continue to do it. I, I, I imagine similar to what we did in season three, um, a little bit more than we had. But primarily, the show is is about what happens in this in this building, in this fake building. Yeah, that is something we're looking at. That is something we're exploring for next year. It's, it's just it doesn't seem to matter what we write. When Lisa and Hugh get in a room together, it, it, somehow there seems to be sexual tension there. Now, in fairness, we have written him commenting on her ass about 20 times. <laughs> so, it's that is the you know that is a challenge that you face on TV all the time. You know, once you you we have to do it in a house way. We can't have it. We're not going to have him start dating and be happy and live together. But you know, maybe one episode something will happen and uh, and they'll have to deal with that. I think that'll probably be next season. We have we haven't mapped it out yet, but uh, that's that's what we're talking about. I don't know. I like. I wrote him, and I didn't expect so many people to like him, but I liked him. So I guess everybody started having the same reaction I had. He he says things that we all want to say. You know, he. That's such a. You know, that's something that people quite often say about other people. And 
He just, he, he has, he's not afraid. He's not afraid to speak his mind. He's not afraid to speak back to authority, and that's a very attractive quality. I also have a theory that, that, that we all deal with jerks. Every single job in the world would be better if you didn't have to deal with the jerks around you. And there are always, and you're probably, you know, I'm probably the jerk to somebody, you're probably the jerk to somebody. We all have somebody that we have to deal with who we go, oh God. And, and our jobs would be so much more pleasant if we could just do the job part of our job. And House calls the jerks jerks. And I think that is something that we just all wish we could do and would like to, and would like to do. It would be horrible. It would be horrible. I mean, I think that is... And I've enjoyed the episodes where particularly Foreman and others have said, House... There was one episode where Foreman actually said to Dr. Cuddy, look, if you let... If, if you ratify what he's doing, you may save this life. But if everybody... If, you, if it became known that doctors could just do whatever they wanted to do whenever they wanted to do it, we'd have bodies dropping constantly because he gets away with it because he's so smart. And unless you're that smart, and that's part of the, the, the difficulty we try and, try and talk about in, in the series, that, you know, there are rules. House is frustrated by rules, but rules exist for a reason. And they're not always right, but if anybody can just ignore them whenever they want to, it's not going to be so great, but House can't.